Okay, so I picked up House of Flame and Shadow like back in February, like when it first came out. And then when I came back from vacation, I kind of just forgot about it. But randomly today, I decided to pick it up again. So I figured if I'm actually gonna read this, then maybe time to start a reading vlog again. If you're watching this vlog, then I actually did continue reading on this and it is Monday, June 26th. So yeah, about four months in between, but I picked it up and I still remember what was going on. So works for me. So it is Wednesday, June something. I honestly don't know, 27, 28, one of those. And I think I was onto something starting this vlog. I haven't continued on with House of Flame and Shadow. I think it was just an indicator that I'm back into a reading mood, if that makes sense. I have been reading a little bit over the past few months, mostly nonfiction books. So I had picked up a nonfiction book over the weekend and it just felt like the type of book I would read because I'm really into like finance books. Like I have been since high school. But on top of that, this year I've been really into like psychology related books. And so I picked up The Psychology of Money, which is a finance and psychology book. So I just felt like it was a good crossover of something that I would probably like. So The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel was the audiobook I picked up this weekend, and it was really good. I finished it yesterday, and I enjoyed it a lot. I think I have to think a little bit more about it before I get into, like, the actual details, because I do think a lot of the book is just, like, common sense things or just common knowledge things. Maybe not com common sense. It's not common sense. But common knowledge things nowadays. But at the same time, I feel like it did gain a lot from actually reading this book. So I enjoyed it a lot. And I think I'm probably gonna uh, flip through it again because I listened to, to it as an audiobook. And I feel like you do miss some things, especially with like nonfiction books when you listen to them as audiobooks. I apologize if you can hear the rain outside. It is pouring right now. But it just made me feel like I was in a really cozy mood. So I thought since I decided to do a vlog this week, I should actually talk about all the books that I'm currently reading. After after I finished The Psychology of Money, I decided to pick up How Not to Die by Michael Greger. So this is like my new nonfiction audiobook. It's a little bit different than some of the other audiobooks that I've been reading. This one is about food and basically longevity and how not to get diseases and things like that. I would not recommend it if you have any sort of anxiety disorder because this can be triggering for that sort of disorder. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's definitely made me want to eat more plant-based food, um, so that's good. Now I also kind of don't want to eat chicken at all. Apparently chicken has all of the diseases, like all of them. I'm still enjoying the book a lot. For fiction though, I have picked up a couple of books. I have not continued on yet. House of Flame and Shadow. I probably will finish it at some point. I only have like eight hours left in the audiobook. But I did pick up The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. So this is like in the same world as the Cruel Prince series and I am enjoying it. I read the first like sequel book following Ren. This one is following Oak though, which I actually really like. I remember liking Oak a lot. I don't know if I like his story as much as the original, but so far I'm enjoying the story. I don't have a physical book currently, but I did pick up an ebook. It's Mort by Terry Pratchett. This is a Discworld book. I've tried to get into Discworld in the past. I started reading The Color of Magic and I was honestly just like a little bored with it, but I feel like Discworld is one of the few like really big popular high fantasy series that I haven't really tried to get into too much. Well, I decided to either do Guards, Guards or Mort, but Mort was the one that my library gave me first. So that's what I've started. I'm about halfway through it. So far I'm enjoying it. It is definitely a little bit more the type of book that I would read than say like The Color of Magic. It's a little bit more absurdist than I'm used to, but I'm still enjoying it quite a lot. So I'm excited to see where that one's going. I do think I need something I'm going to like more than any of these books to continue on with this vlog. But as of right now, I feel like I don't have like a solid, really close focus as to what I want to read. And that's kind of how it's been all year. So we'll see how this goes. Alrighty, so it is Sunday, June 30th, and I finished How Not to Die by my Michael Greger. I really enjoyed this book quite a lot. It's super informative, has a lot of great like specific detailed information on different like vegetables and things like that and I really enjoyed that part of it. I did not like most of the tone of the book because it was very very hard pushing a plant-based diet and I get it from like a scientific perspective but like from a human perspective it's not that reasonable to assume that everyone is gonna go plant-based especially like if you're traveling a lot the world is just not set up for 
everyone to be vegan, right? But I did like how it ended because it ended when the author talked about like one of his friends who recently died at the age of 46 from carbon monoxide poisoning. So nothing at all to do with nutrition. And it was kind of talking about balancing things like the anti-cancer causing foods that are like a lot of vegetables versus, you know, lifestyle. So I did like how it ended. And I think it kind of balanced out the over like pushy tone that the beginning of the book was. I did like that. So I did end up giving it five stars because I do think it's a very balanced, like very informative, good book. And it's actually one that I think I might be buying, but we'll see. I haven't decided yet, but it's definitely one that I would recommend. The other book I wanted to talk about was Mort by Terry Pratchett. I did have to unfortunately return this to the library because it was at its due date and I won't be able to get it back for another three weeks. I am enjoying it, but unfortunately I don't think I'm enjoying it enough to like buy it. So I'm gonna have to wait another three weeks to get back to it, which has been the story of my life this year when it comes to reading. I basically get a book, read about half of it in three weeks, have to return it to the library and have to wait another three to eight weeks to get another copy of it. That's been happening pretty much all year. That's what's happened with Mort. I am enjoying it a lot though. The main character reminds me so much of um, Greg from Succession. I don't know if you guys have seen that TV show, but I love it. And for some reason, he reminds me so much of Greg because he just has this like stumbling, like bumbling naivete about him. But at the same time, like he's actually really smart. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm excited to see more of this. But like I said, probably not in this vlog. Okay, so it's July 22nd. I honestly do not remember the last time that I vlogged what books I was reading or anything like that. Let's just say it's safe to say they probably got returned to the library and I'm waiting for them again. Actually, the book that I'm currently reading while I was listening to the audiobook on my way to work, but it got returned to the library while it was at work. I was really, really into the book and there was only two and a half hours left and I would have to wait four weeks to get it again. So I just decided to get the audiobook from Audible and this book is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett, which so far has been fantastic. It is a very like in-world murder mystery and I absolutely love that. Also, I really love that the world building is like not too heavy in this. You get the world building when you need it and there's not like extra world building for no reason and I really love that about it. Actually, I kind of love that about his writing in general because his other series that I've read by him, it was kind of written in the same way and I think it just really works, especially with this book because it really feels more like a murder mystery but then you get those little hints and clues of like a bigger magical world and I love that about this so far. I'm really excited to see where this is going though because I feel like this has just like a really rich world that we just like barely scratched the surface on. Okay, so I finished The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett and I enjoyed this book so much while at the same time I didn't love it, if that makes sense. I like the fantasy elements of this book but it's very like fantasy minimalism, meaning that like there's not a whole lot of world building. I mean, there is intricate world building. It's just not shown to us. Like we just get like the tip of the iceberg of the world building and it's just the part of the world building that is like important to what's going on in the story at the time, which I liked. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I would enjoy it a lot more if it wasn't for the mystery plot because since it is so minimalistic fantasy, I have to look at it more as a mystery novel because it is basically a murder mystery novel. And on that side of things, there's something, a pet peeve of mine, that I don't like it when murder mystery novels or any mystery type of story or just like anything with like twist or anything does, this book did. And basically it's when they withhold information that we need to like understand what is going on or to, to like guess like the twist until it's actually relevant, which is exactly what this story does. But at the same time, like that vibe kind of fits in with the story because that's what it's been doing this entire time when it comes to the world building and it is a world building element that is missing. So it's just like, I could have guessed it if I knew this world building element, but that world building element wasn't like necessary until it was time to guess. I don't know. I, I think like the author may have gotten away with this particular one. Like I didn't hate the ending, whereas if it wasn't a fantasy novel, I probably would have hated the author for doing this or hated the book ending for doing this, but I still enjoyed it. So I enjoyed it. I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. So I'm giving it 3.5 stars. So it is July 28th. I just started and finished 
One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. I listened to the audiobook of this, but I did buy the physical book because y'all know I love Ruth Ware. I specifically love her audiobooks because Imogen Church is her audiobook narrator and Imogen Church is just amazing. I absolutely love everything that she does. So yes, I enjoyed this and I think it just fits really well with Ruth Ware's writing style because she has a very atmospheric writing style. I know I was talking about mystery novels and not really liking them uh, a little bit earlier in this vlog, but this is one that I absolutely loved. I ended up giving it five stars. So this is about like a couple who goes on like a reality TV show. And I definitely thought that it was gonna give like unreal vibes. If you've seen that TV show, which is about reality TV shows and how like the producers push people into doing things that they wouldn't really do, but it didn't really give those vibes. It was very more Lord of the Flies, but I loved that about it because they get caught on this storm on this island and basically cut off from society and they're stuck on the island with a murderer. So that's always fun. But I loved every second of this and I really loved the direction that it ended up going. I don't want to say anything more about it because I feel like that's spoilers, but highly recommend. If you just like a good thriller every once in a while, this one was a lot of fun. I read it in one day and I absolutely loved it. So I gave it five stars. During the gap in this vlog, I was reading Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver and... <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I know now why I did not finish it before I had to return it to the library. So it's Monday, June 29th now, and I literally just got it back from my library hold. So I started reading it again before I left for work because I was gonna listen to it in the car on my way to work. But I don't know that I want to. I completely understand why I did not continue reading it back then. And I kind of want to switch to a different audiobook. So I might, by the end of this vlog, have switched to a different audiobook. I'm not enjoying it as much as I did Blackbird and Butcher, which I'll talk to about later because I'm like in a super rush right now. But these types of scenes, normally I don't mind them that much, especially like when it's words on paper. But when they have it audiobook version, it cringes me out a little bit. And then it's not only the words, it is also the sounds. There are sounds and I, I just can't. I just can't. Especially when my head is supposed to be on work right now. I cannot listen to this in my car, but I don't have another audiobook right now. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, so it is July 30th and I did finish Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. I ended up giving it one star, which sounds terrible. Like I feel bad about it, but I also kind of don't feel bad about it because I feel like I am like the target audience for this book. I love horror. I love romance. I love horror and romance together. So I'm like the target audience for like a serial killer romance. One thing I will say, I did physically read the first book, Butcher and Blackbird, and then Leather and Lark, I read the audiobook for, which Butcher and Blackbird, I gave it three stars. And I think like the storyline for Leather and Lark is not as good as Butcher and Blackbird. They're not really serial killers. Like Butcher and Blackbird, both of them were absolutely serial killers in like not the most interesting ways, which is why it only got three stars. And then this one was just less interesting than that. And then on top of that, I got the audiobook, which I'm very picky about my audiobooks, especially when they're like semi full cast. Like I prefer them to be like one audiobook narrator, no sound effects, like that sort of thing. And this not only was multiple audiobook narrators, but there were definitely sound effects. Like the sound effects weren't specific to like the intimate scenes, which if it was, I think I would be like more okay with that. But there was a point where like they were just saying goodbye and he like kissed her on the forehead and there was a kissing sound of him kissing her on the forehead. And I was just like, no, that is unnecessary. I do not need that. I do not need it in my car. I do not need to hear it. I do not need any of that. So yeah. That just took the book from a two star for me down to a one star. And I'm okay with doing that. Like, it's fine. I'm probably not gonna read the next book in this series because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a trilogy. But yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> but other than that one, I feel like I had a really good reading month in July. And hopefully I will do these more often.